Okay, today I just want to provide an update on the most recent rebuttal provided by GSX to Muddy Waters. And this happened on May 28th. In this very short video, I want to just provide my personal take, try to interpret what it actually means for those who wonder if they really did commit financial fraud. So regarding the first point in Muddy Waters' new report, it claims that GSX omitted agent ID, agent policy, and timestamp from their previous rebuttal. In the newest round, GSX actually said uh, the timestamp was actually provided in the picture, and the other two IDs are insignificant and are not a part of the output file. And to this point, I think GSX did provide an adequate response, and I want to give them one point. The next claim, the sample that Muddy Waters examined only makes up about 2.9% of the total number of IDs examined by GSX. However, the duplicate IPs that Muddy Waters found represent an astonishing 34% of the findings that GSX was able to come out with. And the response GSX provided, they basically just rephrased the last findings without providing any additional evidence. So to this point, I don't think GSX provided any new material information, and I would like to give one point to Muddy Waters. The next point was, during the previous exchange, Money Water claims that one of the bot behaviors was the burst joiners. And GSX responded with an explanation saying that the reason that happens is because there were smaller groups of tutors providing pre-class sessions with the students, and then they would later on be joining to the classes at the same time. However, Money Water says if that were to happen, then it would happen around the starting time of the class, not after or before five minutes of starting time. And uh, the response GSX provided this time is sometimes when the tutor and the lecturer are not present at a predetermined time prior to the start of the class, the automatic switch would not be triggered. They would still resort to a manual switch later on in the class. So I think that's an efficient response to the question, and I would call this a even exchange. In the newest round of short report, Money Waters posted a couple of job postings hiring engineers that allegedly service the bot farms. In GSX's response, they did not refute those hiring posts. Their explanation is those hirings are to support ever-expanding group of tutors and also in order to support their increasing students, they need to make sure that they have adequate services. So those bots are really used to provide automatic uh, responses to some of the students' questions. However, when I clicked on one of the postings, that posting is no longer available. So I do think GSX has something to hide over here, and they did not refute those posts are not real. So I am going to give Muddy Waters another point over here. And the last one is actually regarding a previous short sale report, and I just want to add, Muddy Waters questioned GSX faking their revenue by using bots as actual students and transfer money from those bot farms into their company. The response that GSX provided was all transactions within GSX are canceled when they consolidate their financial reports. So they didn't really refute the fact that bots were actually used, but that statement meant to affirm that their financials are being correctly reported. I think either party could not be proven correct, so I call this round another even exchange. After the most recent exchange between the two parties, I think Muddy Waters came slightly ahead. This is my verdict, and I really want to interpret all the rounds of exchanges that happened previously because I know a lot of people are going by a short sale reports and currently either having put options or shorting the company. Based on all the research that I have done and reading information on Chinese forums and websites, this is my interpretation of their actual response. What GSX is saying is they did hire engineers to manage the bots, but they are mostly for free classes and in WeChat groups to create an environment that make real attendees feel there are more people interested than the actual number of attendants. By imposturing other genuine students with the bots to influence potential buyers into buying decision. But our sales numbers are real because the bots in full price classes are only intended to leave positive comments, not used to inflate revenues. So I hope this is helpful information to anyone who's committing a lot of their money into shorting this company and hoping that it will go down. And again, aside from all the short interests, we have to remember, even if their practice is proven to be illegal, it may not be as serious as faking revenue, as claimed by Muddy Waters. And right now, out of all 59 million shares float, a majority of those shares are currently being owned by institutions. So there aren't a lot of shares available to be sold. With an overwhelming number of put options outstanding, currently, I believe, is 
10 put options for each call option that's out there. Those options are written by the institutions that currently own the shares. So they have an interest to let all of these options to expire worthless. And these options are worth over $50 million. If you look at the implied volatility of the call and put options near the current trading price, these options are being traded at a very high premium. You would have to have the price drop much lower than the $31 that is trading at today in order to make a profit. Otherwise, your option will just continue to decay and you will lose more of your investment. So just be careful. A lot of those institutions are currently issuing buy readings on this particular stock. So I don't think they are going to give up anytime soon, at least not until the short term June and July options expire. The long term outlook for this company is not looking very bright. WeChat recently just shut down one of the functionalities that GSX relies very heavily for its marketing strategy. And this will hurt its long term customer acquisition cost. And we have already seen in the first quarter, their acquisition costs increased by almost 700% from last year. So I believe right now at its current price, the company is overvalued. And we'll see that in their Q2 financials. This is my short update on the previous rounds of exchange. If you find the information helpful, please subscribe to my channel. And I will uh, continue to provide information to help investors to navigate different Chinese companies. Thank you.